The second gen Jeep Cherokee XJ is known to easily last upwards to 300,000 miles with its nearly bulletproof 4 liter inline 6 engine. The Cherokee XJ has been in production since 1984 but received a refresh in 97, finally ending the XJ's production in 2001. To many, the XJ is the ultimate Jeep that can be as capable as most Wranglers with a huge variety of aftermarket parts, all while being pretty cheap. Although the Jeep is awesome, how reliable is it? Of course, with most Jeeps being toys or just projects, the issues may vary, but here are some of the most common issues with the Jeep Cherokee XJ from 97 to 2001 that you should know about just to be better educated about your ride and wait to the end when I talk about the most costly repairs. Let's get started. Stumping noise when accelerating from a stop. Might sound like there's a bowling ball in the rear of the car. Basically, the slip yoke is requiring some grease. The slip yoke is getting sticky and causing the thumping noises. Unclasp the rubber boot over the slip yoke, pull it all the way out as much as you can, and add some axle grease to it. That should fix the issue. Only the driver door switches work except for the window lockout switch, and all other window switches may not work on the rest of the doors. This is most likely due to the lockout switch being shorted, probably due to a turned wire. All you must do is move the door panel, follow the wire back from the lockout switch and find where the wire has split and simply reconnect it. Back to the windows, the windows may not roll up or down and that's a failed window regulator, but if the window only rolls up or only rolls down, and that's yet again another bad wire. So same procedure, follow the wire, find the tear, and reconnect it. No star issue, most likely correlated with the neutral safety switch being a bit dirty or corroded. After messing with the shifter going in and out of the gear and the Jeep finally starts, this is your issue. All you have to do is gain access to the NNS switch and clean it up or replace it. Annoying squeaking from the rear of the car, most likely due to either the tailgate latch or the seat latches. And just some grease will fix that right up. The exhaust manifold is prone to cracking and it can be quite pricey to repair, especially if you take it to the mechanic. You can weld the crack, but that is just a temporary fix. So go ahead and upgrade the exhaust manifold with one that is resistant to cracking and you'll be good to go. Fuel injectors becoming heat soaked and causing a rough idle or a no start after you shut off the engine when it's hot. This is due to the engine compartment becoming very hot when it is turned off. So an increase of ventilation will help this issue and adding many heat shields around the fuel injectors can resolve this issue as well. Adding hood vents, a fan on a timer, or leaving the hood cracked will increase the airflow under the hood. Jeep starts to shake and feels like it's going to basically fall apart at around 35 miles per hour. This is called the death wobble. This is due to the suspension's geometry. Basically, one of the tie rod ends could be faulty, a bad alignment, or what mostly happens is that this bolt comes loose, allowing too much movement. Water leaking onto the passenger floorboard. It could be a leaking cowl, or the blow motor still going bad. Pour water near the blower motor location and see if that is where the water leak is coming from. Then troubleshoot from there. Rotting out unibody, which is very common in the rust belt. If the frame is rusty, do not buy the Jeep. You will be in for the scrapper if you do. Now, if there is just surface rust, you are fine, but look all around the frame and make sure there aren't any major rust spots. The oil pressure sending unit is faulty, causing the gauge to bounce around, giving false readings and probably freaking you out. So if the gauge is being all kinds of funky, this is most likely your issue and replacing the sending unit is easy and straightforward. 
the brake caliper sticking and not functioning properly, which is pretty dangerous. This is due to dirt and debris getting behind the piston and the calibers. You can rebuild them or just replace the calibers. Replacing the calibers may be the way to go, and they are fairly cheap to replace. Finally, this is the costliest repair if you do not fix the issue or catch it in time. Well, besides the USA frame, but hopefully you didn't buy that Jeep. The Jeep overheats. This is due to the clutch fan going bad, most likely, and ideally the clutch fan should have a little bit of resistance when you try to turn it. If it spins freely, then this is your issue. Now, of course, if you allow it to overheat, you can easily be in for a head gasket repair or a new engine in total. So just be careful and be cautious. Those are all the main issues with the Jeep Cherokee XJ. Most of all these issues kind of pertain to the entire generation, but mainly between the 97 to 01 years. If you're in the market for a Jeep, make sure you grab one with the inline six if you want the Jeep to last a very long time. If this helped you out, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe. If I missed something, let me know down below. This is Chris Automotivate. Always appreciate and respect one another. I'll see you next time.